Welcome to the Missile Defense Agency. Since the dawn of the Missile Age in World War II, the threat of a missile attack on America and its friends and allies has grown and evolved. From the first inaccurate German V-2 ballistic missiles to the sophisticated Soviet nuclear ICBM forces and the proliferation around the world of missiles of all ranges during the Cold War to the growing threats today posed by short, medium, and intermediate ballistic missiles fielded by regional adversaries and terrorist organizations. In meeting these challenges, the United States continues to develop adaptable next-generation missile defense solutions to protect our freedoms and ensure the safety of our nation, our deployed troops, and our allies and friends. The German V-2, the world's first ballistic missile, became operational in 1944. There was no defense against it. By war's end, more than a thousand ballistic missiles struck Allied targets in Europe. Hitler's Germany had more advanced designs on the drawing board for missiles that could reach across the Atlantic to attack targets in the United States. American military planners quickly recognized the need to develop missile defense capabilities. And in 1946, the Army Air Forces initiated Projects Wizard and Thumper to begin designing an anti-ballistic missile, or ABM. In 1949, the Army began developing a theater ABM system that would provide the building blocks for a succession of future missile defense systems. As the Cold War intensified and the threat posed by Soviet intercontinental ballistic missiles grew, the Army began developing the Nike Zeus nuclear ABM system in early 1957 to protect selected U.S. cities. Later that year, the Soviet Union tested an intercontinental ballistic missile and launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite which confirmed the vulnerability of the United States to a Soviet ICBM attack. Shortly after the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, the Army introduced a more robust ABM system called Nike-X, which used improved radars, the Sprint, a terminal defense interceptor, and the Nike Zeus interceptor for high-altitude targets which used a nuclear warhead to destroy its target and was later modified and renamed the Spartan. Together, this layered defense promised a potential for stopping enemy warheads within and above the atmosphere. China's emergence as a nuclear power and the Soviet Union's growing nuclear arsenal led the Johnson administration to announce the deployment of the Nike-X ABM system in 1967, which again used nuclear interceptors and was later renamed Sentinel. In 1969, President Richard Nixon reoriented the Sentinel ABM system, which he renamed Safeguard, from protecting cities to protecting the nation's silo-based Minuteman ICBM force. The Safeguard ABM system became an important bargaining chip in arms control negotiations with the Soviet Union. The talks led to the 1972 Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty and a 1974 treaty protocol which, among other things, restricted the deployment of strategic space-based, sea-based or mobile ABM systems. The single safeguard site allowed by the treaty was operational from October 1975 to February 1976 before Congress terminated the program. U.S. policymakers instead relied on policies that based U.S. national security on strategic nuclear deterrence and mutual assured destruction, or MAD. By the late 1970s, the U.S. defense planners re-examined prospects for developing an ABM system as the continued growth in the quantity and quality of Soviet ICBMs threatened the survivability of U.S. land-based ICBMs. President Ronald Reagan desired an alternative to mutual assured destruction. He shared his vision for developing missile defenses that would one day render nuclear missiles obsolete in a March 1983 speech announcing the Strategic Defense Initiative. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. One year later, in April 1984, 
the Department of Defense established the Strategic Defense Initiative Organization to manage a consolidated and expanded missile defense program that combined existing government projects spread across the services. In June 1984, the Army's homing overlay experiment successfully demonstrated non-nuclear hit-to-kill technology by intercepting a dummy warhead outside Earth's atmosphere. After the end of the Cold War, the George H.W. Bush administration reoriented the SDI program to defend America against limited missile attacks and protect deployed U.S. forces and friends and allies against theater ballistic missiles in a system called Global Protection Against Limited Strikes, or GPOWs, which were to be fully deployed, would have required altering or withdrawing from the ABM Treaty. In order to comply with the ABM Treaty, the Clinton administration reoriented missile defense away from GPALs and placed greater emphasis on theater missile defense development. As a reflection of this change, in 1994, the Defense Department renamed SDIO the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization. By the late 1990s, however, new estimates of the long-range ballistic missile threat gave impetus to a new program to strengthen U.S. homeland defenses called National Missile Defense. The National Missile Defense Act of 1999 mandated the deployment of an effective missile defense system to defend the nation against a limited ballistic missile attack as soon as technologically possible. The George W. Bush administration committed to deploying a missile defense system in the shortest possible time, and in December 2001, announced its intent to withdraw from the ABM Treaty in June 2002. After a comprehensive review of possible missile defense architectures, the Bush Missile Defense Program focus shifted to a concept for an integrated layered defense capable of attacking warheads and missiles of all ranges and in all phases of their flight. Reflecting this shift, in January 2002, BMDO was renamed the Missile Defense Agency. The following December, the President established a 2004 deadline to field initial defense capabilities. In 2004, 60 years after the first V-2 missile attacks, MDA's ballistic missile defense system began limited defense operations by incorporating Patriot Advanced Capability 3 interceptors for short-range defense, Aegis Standard Missile 3 interceptors for medium-range defense, and ground-based mid-course defense interceptors for long-range defense. The Bush administration started planning for a European Missile Defense Site to intercept ballistic missiles launched from the Middle East using a modified version of the ground-based interceptor and a mid-course X-band radar. While maintaining the U.S. government's commitment to homeland defense, in 2009, the Obama administration decided to base European missile defenses on upgraded versions of the standard Missile 3 interceptor. The new phased adaptive approach deploys U.S. upper-tier sea and land-based missile defenses in Europe in four phases to supplement NATO lower-tier systems as short- and longer-range missile threats from the Middle East proliferated. Today, the Missile Defense Agency is a research, development, and acquisition agency within the Department of Defense. Our workforce includes government civilians, military service members, and contractor personnel in multiple locations across the United States. As we develop, test, and field an integrated ballistic missile defense system, MDA works closely with the combatant commanders who rely on the system to protect the United States, our forward deployed forces, and our friends and allies from ballistic missile attack.